Greetings to each and every one. Linval, thanks for the microphone, you know, in Kingston, Jamaica, right in Estonia. I was just my resident, you know. Over 30 years I've been in Estonia, you know. This, this on the right is the original. You know, start from this one on the right. You know? And build up my apartment from the top about five yeah. weeks, couple of weeks. We're gonna put up some brand new building. Brand new apartment right here. You know? Yeah man. I love this vibe, you know. The kids then, you know? The younger kids then come up to have something to rap on, you know. I start the foundation, give it down to the younger one, you know. My kids then, you know. Do you want to leave? That's it, Where you want to live, not you dread want to live in the hill. Where you want to live, not you dread want to live in the hill. Where the morning sun shining so bright and sweet. Where the cool, cool breeze. Blowing so cool and sweet We don't want to live too low We don't want no one come push us around In a deal, in a deal Not the dread I go live Yeah man, we want to live Not the dread want to live in the hills, you know? Chuck here, there is no other woman. That's my first recording as a young singer coming up. I produced that truck for myself in Brooklyn, New York. Um, live instrument with um, the band named Buccaneers in New York City, Brooklyn. We record it at a studio named Artcraft. I think in that time maybe it was the only, you know, studio in Brooklyn what I could find to record that track. I write the song, I produce the song, and I sing the song. And that's what my that's 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 that that's, that song was my first break to make like um everybody in reggae music, know that I was a young star coming up. That's what my fir my first identification to show that yes, this is Linwell Thompson. I produced that for myself, so this song is very important for me. With gracious love, when it's just um, I write the song, you know. Alio. Holy, 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 good gracious, my woman is going out with another man. Well, that song, it was, um, it's not like anything goes like that. At the time, I was a young, young little youth, really, you know. Uh, but the vibe just come to me and I write the song. It was just like an inspiration, you know, come to me. In New York, also that song recorded in New York, also. At the same studio, Buccaneer. You know, in Brooklyn, Hardcroft recording studio, same musician by Buccaneers, play the song. Um, and we just record it, release it again in New York. Try to get it on the radio. You know, but I never have enough singers in New York. You know, 
just like Bunny Rocks was there also in New York, Brooklyn. He used to live there also. You know? Well, that's why he never really make his name in third world as nothing. You know, he's just coming up. You know what I mean? Singing with the band too. You know? And you have a next singer named Patrick Halley. He have a sound like um, John Holt. He used to be around too. He's the one who introduced me to the studio, you know? All of that. But everything was... These tracks, when I come back to Jamaica, um, like I take back what I record in New York, you know, to make um, like some producer hear me, and they they was impressed, they like the sound and everything, you know. So I meet this first guy named Stammer. He was um, like a young producer downtown, you know, hanging around downtown, Orange Street era, parade. Near Randy's studio, recording studio, and the record shop. At the time, Randy's used to be there. Randy's called VP now. So, um, he hear my song and he like it. So he say, "Come on, man, um, I'm gonna put you on my track. I have a track, what you know? I can put you on." And same time, I listen to the track and I say, "Yes." I write a song to it. The song name, "My Mama Say." I. And that was a nice song in Jamaica too, you know. Get popular, but you know, good track, dancehall style, you know. We meet, we meet um, Bonnelly through Johnny Clark, you know. Johnny Clark was my yeah, friend, was singer in that time. He was on top, you know. So I just keep on hanging around the studio, want to record, you know. But they never record, me, you know. They say it's not the right time, it's just cool, you know. So I just keep cool, you know. But um, I think Phil Pratt, I meet Phil Pratt, and Phil Pratt said, yes, come on, let's go to Leaper's studio. And we record about two tracks, this track named Jada Jada and Dread, and the next track by the name of Girl They Got To Run. We do that two track, you know. And then Lee Perry, hear, my, hear the style and love my style, you know. And we come back to the studio again and record a song, a song named Kung Fu Fighting. You will never, never get next to me No matter how you try and you try, my friend And if you ever, ever try to get next to me I'm gonna show you a little And Lee Perry is the one who, you know what I mean, like, um, produce a song, arrange a song, Show me how to sing the song, and then he put on the the kind of style there, yeah. and that song, you know, it come out later on, down, you know, it never come out same time. Like now, everybody been crazy about that 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 same track right now in Japan. Everybody wants it and don't play it style, you know, kung fu with a hoo ha sleepery, you know what I mean? Great sleepery. You know what I mean? So we record those tracks, you know? And then we move on to Bonnie Lee, Striker Lee, you know? The first track I done is a track. Don't name, don't talk about you cut off your dreadlocks. That was a massive hit all over from Kingston to London, all over California. Don't you cut off your dreadlocks. That was a massive hit, you know what I mean? That's the release. You just, you know what I mean? Every dance, every dance. Have it plain, don't cut up the dreadlocks. You know what I mean? So, we went ahead and then uh, we record the album, you know? An album named Don't Cut Up the Dreadlocks. And that album never stops selling. Papa, please, oh, 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 oh. Papa, please, oh. oh, oh. Man, 
Well, um, the great King Tubbies, he used to love the Linval Thompson style, you know? Because it was a unique style, King Tubbies say, say boy, you know? So he used to do a thing named Special. Now we call it Dub Plate. Special, we never sing about killing sound. We sing about, like, uh, positive songs. And King Tubbies would play it and the sound, no other sound can play it. You know what I mean? Anytime you play that in the dance, the whole place, you know what I mean, just get excited. Brand new Linval Thompson and King Tubby's sound. You are at the control. You know what I mean? And that was great. Yeah, um, in that time we just sing the one was record a couple of songs. We never wasn't like checking how much songs. That time you never have CDs, so a album would take just maybe nine, ten tracks. Or we do maybe fifteen tracks. So we have like extra track, but maybe never too strong at that time. So he just released them now, like Dreadlock Scotsman. He's released them on 45, 7 inch. You know what I mean? And we have some more one track, different track. And you release again, you know? Well, I sing for maybe a couple of producers, maybe, maybe, you can check maybe one, two, maybe about four or five producers. Like, um, I sing a track, Train to Zion, you know what I mean? For, uh, it was a hit song to Social Roots sound, you know what I mean? It was a big song in Jamaica, Social Roots. And they made that track been a big truck in Jamaica, big, 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 big train design, you know? And then from there, I tried to do my own thing, produce my own song. Yeah, my first track was, um, my first album was I Love to Smoke. Marijuana in my soul. first big album and that track is a very big track for me it's also recording a movie right now the movie name Euro Trip and that's a very big song for me you know and then um, from there I start to produce like different artists like Freddie McGregor Barrington Levy Ica Mouse Sugar Minot, Barry Brown, Vice Rise, Wailing Soul, and a lot, a lot of more artists. Bring up like young artists in that time. Used to bust them out, you know? Well, this main track named Dread at the Control. I write that track, Mikey Dread. He was a, and he was a big, a big, big thing in Jamaica about Dread at the Control. So I write that track especially for Mikey Dread. I never forgot that. I, you know, he loved that. He loved that. Natty Dread at the Controller. He also was a dreadlock. Natty Dread at the Controller. They will try to lead you astray, my brother. And Natty Jada, the controller. Yes, man, that track is special. Special for Mikey Dread. You know what I mean? And then he turned a big DJ, rapper, also, you know what I mean? He used to DJ with the Clash. And he gets a big. Mm. Uh, I make it um, in New York, though. No? And then I come back and make it roll, redo the next cut for Bonnie Lee in Jamaica. So it was like two separate, very different versions, two different styles. But I love the track, you know? But I record it for myself in New York. And then when I come back to Jamaica and record it back for Bonnie Lee, you know? But it was two different styles, you know? But it's also based up Roll River Jordan, Blood Gonna Roll Like River Jordan, you know? If the rich man don't help the poor man. You know, I'm styling. I never mean to make you feel so lonely. I never mean to make you change your mind. Yeah, man. 
Well, those tracks what I do for jam is um, it was um, like you know, I was producing myself, and he like he begged me to to record a song for him, you know. So I record two tracks. Black Uru was on the same track too, you know. It was uh, that's those tracks I think releasing in, in in London in the early time, you know. You know what I mean? In the I think um, King Selassie rhythm, some of the rhythm name, something like that. Babylon, I recorded a track in Kingston, Jamaica for myself, Thompson Sound Production. It was a hit song also. And then we went to America in Brooklyn to, uh, to put it together to make an album. And we record some tracks at the same studio named Artcraft to make up that Six Babylon album. Well, Brad is a very good man. He loves reggae music. You know what I mean? He passed off, you know, by some, you know, I don't know, but he loses life in Brooklyn, you know. He was a great producer. He produced a lot of artists, mostly every artist in Jamaica, up to Bob Marley. You know what I mean? He produced in Brooklyn. Nobody ever really know what's going on, but he have all those songs produce all top artists, you know what I mean, Paragons, you know what I mean, Lindbad Thompson, Johnny Clark, Away Sunday, you know what I mean, Damon, Brad's way back in the 70s, 80s, Clap Tower, you know. in London, you know, give it to a company named Starlight to release, and we released in London a disco mix, great shop. Then murder, it was like, you know, we just trying different, different style. You know, he came to me, you know. So there's come up with a track named Murder, you know what I mean? Babylon are pushing it further, you know. So um, now we have it coming, coming together, we're putting it right on this CD, you know. Like enough, many people never hear that track before. And here you as a DJ though? Well, we call it like a rap style, sing, you know what I mean? Sing J rap. Sing yeah. J style, you know. Versatile, you know what I mean? Versatile style. You know, we can do a lot of things with our voice, you know? Not just sing, we can also harmony, rap, you know, many things. You have to versatile, you know what I mean? Whenever you need me, just In my time, I record a couple tracks with Dennis Brown. And right now, I have a track on this album, Don't Be Afraid. It was on Dennis Brown, even special label, but we also produce it together just to make a different vibes, you know what I mean? That I'm producing Dennis Brown, and Dennis Brown is releasing Aline Van Thompson to make a different vibes, you know what I mean? So it's like um, Dennis Brown, he was a great singer. When I was a young guy coming up, I used to listen to Dennis Brown's style. I love his style. And I kind of, you know, listen to his lyrics, listen to his style, everything I love, you know. So I, I give great respect to Dennis Brown, you know what I mean? So, everything was cool. Yeah, lonesome, that truck.
Yeah, Lonesome, that track I record, that track I channel one for Roots Radix, bass player, Flabber Holt. And then I record it back over in London for myself. So this track is really produced by um, Roots Radix, Flabber Holt. So we also have it on this album right now. It was a great track. You know, I mean, original Roots Radix song, you know? And what, is, what do the lyrics really mean? Love some, love, love, some is love some me like um, people want something from you. They want a lot of things from you. They just come and beg you every day they see you. Everything them see, naughty dreadlocks have. Them a run come, them a run come. Say them want lump sum. Lump sum mean money. Lump sum mean food. Lump sum mean anything somebody just want from you. That's my style, so I give it that name, Lumsum. See, no, nobody ever hear that, 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 that lyric say, Lumsum, right? The first you really hear it, you know what I mean? So yes, I tell you, say, lyrics come from all over, you know what I mean? So Lumsum mean people just want to take something from you. Everything them see I have. Them see me driving a car, you know what I mean? If them see me walking, them say, beg you this. I give, but they still want more. Mm -hmm. they, they can't satisfy. So everything them see, not the dread of. They want from the dread. You see what I mean? They just want a lump sum. The more they give them, the more they want. But I saw it go. i glad to give them. i glad to give them, you know? So I just sing this song, lump sum. You know what I mean? So I just survive there. See? Yeah, man. Stand up with me, Ja. You see, enough people don't know that I'm dread. They wonder. But you see, my dread, you know, it's very important to me. You know what I mean? And it's like the vibes have to write before I flash my dread. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it's like a power to me. You know what I mean? Trust me. You know? And the vibes have to be, you know what I mean? Up on the right move, everything have to be powerful, power. You know what I mean? It have to be a good vibes. Like right now, it's a good vibes. Good vibes. Making the world know that don't take out half the dreadlocks. It's still on top. Wow, 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 dreadlocks. Wow, wow, Don't you cut off your dreadlocks. Samsung was a dreadlock, so the light of betrayed. 